video. Today we're talking about some of the hybrid turbochargers you can find on the market locally, South Africa, for the Fiesta STs. Uh, I'm not sure where these originate from, but I can tell you that uh, after you've seen this video, you will agree with me that there's nothing but low quality products, sometimes used products, and or modified cheap Chinese manufactured products used in the build of these turbos or these rotating assemblies. This video is there just to expose and to educate and to bring to the, 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 the forefront what is actually floating around in our industry so that you guys as the consumer can be educated and be brought to, uh, into the understanding of exactly what you guys are paying hard-earned money for and why you might find problems with these hybrids that are floating around. Um, how this happened was last week Thursday a client brought a turbocharger into us, asked us to please analyse what the, what, what the problem with the turbocharger is. It was purchased from a local company and it started to smoke. They had a bit of a fallout with this company so they brought the turbocharger to us just to get the thing repaired so they can get the vehicle running and be on their way. So we opened the job card, disassembled the turbocharger which you will see just now and we reveal how this specific hybrid turbocharger was built, the components used and its shortcomings. I hope this is informative, hope you guys like this and remember please subscribe, like, comment, let us know what you think in the comments below and uh, we'll see you next time. Cheers. What I want to show you guys, let's just disassemble this, this turbo so we can just get in the inside and see exactly. Look at that, that wasn't very very tight at all. Um, yeah, okay, problem number one. So once again this is what we refer to as a polished turd. Um, I know I've mentioned that specific connotation in a lot of our videos, but a uh, nice little bullet nut and you know, little bullet nut, compressor wheel comes off. Okay, you can see this is uh, one of these knockoffs. This looks very, very similar to one of the wheels that Turbo Direct designed in 2009, the KO4R. This should actually be 49.64 millimeters, which in actual fact it is and at the back here on the tip should be 68 or 69 tip to tip we should do it this way there to there 66 and then the base should be 64 this is a copy of the KO4R which was designed by Turbo Direct This is a failed version of the wheel that they've copied and this was manufactured by us and when what we used to do in the old days just to show off a little bit is actually go and do balancing by machining the word turbo direct down the side of the blade and you'll see that blade there is quite quite deep that one is not as deep that one's quite deep again so we actually did balancing in that way and obviously supplemented it with uh, cuts over there so this is also it's touched the housing slightly but you'll get the gist of this this is a very old wheel 49 okay so now it's obviously touched you can see it's made contact so the 0.4 or the 0.64 is obviously the difference but that is as close as damn it to our design blade 64 as you can see so let's go back to the tips over here Sixty-six, exactly the same. So these guys have basically copied what we've uh, what we've designed. All right. mm. Hello, that came out really, really simple, really, really easy. Okay, back plate, heat shield, thrust bearing, thrust assembly. Right. So let's just lay these components out here, and uh, let's see what we've got. Right. So we have a little bullet nut a bullet compressor wheel, a shaft which is missing a split seal ring on the turbine side. So as you, as I've already mentioned in the other video that this turbo came off of a car which didn't even drive. It was literally idling and started smoking and uh, obviously the guy said listen just take the turbo off and inspect it for us. A little bit of 
markings over there on the shaft oh very very interesting so take a careful look look at the dull appearance on the shaft over there as i turn the shaft you can see that appearance there the appearance of the shaft is really really dull it looks like they've gone and ground the shaft in actual fact they have you can actually see that shiny appearance there as i move the shaft around in the light very interesting what i'm doing is i'm just moving the comp wheel up and down the shaft so it's tight on that section there it hasn't even butted up yet and then it's loose so it's loose over there up until there it's loose and it gets tight now you have to squirm it around to get it to butt up to against the shoulder that's the neck that's the shoulder but now look at this really really interesting the reason that we're starting to see this color is because those that rough finish on the shaft from them grinding it has now started to grind the inside of the compressor wheel and that's what's rubbing off of my finger so this guys is what you can expect from the likes of your uh, Chinese corner shop guys that claim to have uh, all the expertise and uh, the ability to build a hybrid turbo. This turbocharger is absolute rubbish. It's a total scrap. I wouldn't run this turbocharger if you paid me. If you gave it to me for free, I'd sell it. I wouldn't even use it as a paperweight. That shaft over here has got what we call metallurgical terms, what we term RZ and RA, in other words, uh, all of the grooves. So even if you machine, for example, a compressor wheel, have a look at the back of this wheel. I've just wiped it. This wheel looks nice and smooth. Listen here. Don't know if you can hear that. What I'm doing is I'm rubbing my fingernail across the base of the wheel. And what you're hearing is my fingernail going over what we term metallurgically the RZ and the RA. Those are grooves, which I'll explain in the video as we move forward just now. Hey guys, welcome back. We're going to be doing a little bit of a technical outline or a technical, ex technical explanation about uh, machining and surface roughness and the metallurgical term of your machining roughness. Now, we're obviously talking about that little uh, Fiesta ST hybrid that we uh, were given by a customer just to go and investigate as to why the turbocharger was leaking oil and smoking. Um, it was a brand new turbocharger supplied, hadn't even run yet. Uh, literally, the car just started and it had been idling for a while just to get up to temperature and uh, obviously started smoking. And as it started smoking, the guy shut the engine off, took the turbocharger off, brought it to us, and said, Please find out what the cause of failure is or why it's leaking. Sort the thing out for us. And uh, that's obviously what we found. Now, what you're looking at, and remember when, when just cast your mind back to when I was rubbing my fingernail across the uh, back of the compressor wheel, you were hearing that screeching scratching sound what you were hearing was my fingernail running over what we call the rz's and the ra's so if you ever look at a piece of material regardless of what it's made from if you've gone and machined it or the cutting let's say for example you have a shaft right and you've got a lathe a cutting tool and a lathe there's your cutting tool over there and obviously you run you rotate the shaft and you obviously feed your cutting tool across the face of that uh, uh, shaft or a compressor wheel or whatever the case might be if you zoom in on that, what you actually see on the shaft is what we term RZs and RAs. Now, as you run your fingernail across, that screeching sound is actually the sound you're hearing when your fingernail goes from the one high point into the low point, high point into the low point. So as you run your finger across those, uh, um, those high sections, you'll actually hear that it becomes audible. So that is essentially what you heard. And if you use sandpaper, let's just assume that that is what a piece of sandpaper looks like if you zoom in on it and obviously as you sand away the paper will obviously start to wear down and you know those sharper edges will become smaller and smaller and obviously as the sandpaper wears away but that actual shape is obviously transferred into whatever it is the abrasive is obviously transferred into whatever it is that you're being uh, um, that you're sanding down so the most common practice is to actually take a shaft between centers um, either you bolt the actual head on the turbine head into the actual chuck and then you run a running center on the back of the shaft. If you have a look at the back of the shaft, you always see 90% of the time, uh, depending on how it's made and who makes it, um, a lot of the time you'll actually have a hole in the end of the shaft, which is where you run your running center. And they just cut a strip of sandpaper and they run it across the 
shaft like this as it rotates in the lathe, and that's essentially what you get. So that is essentially the shaft roughness. Now, very, very quickly, if we go into materials, for example, wood. If you look at wood that's got a grain, it's called the grain structure or a grain boundary. You'll actually see that there's lines in the wood. If you take an axe and you hit it in line with the grain, it's going to obviously split the wood. Now, if you, if you hit it across the grain, you're going to battle to break the, the, the piece of wood. Now, just like wood, aluminium, steel, ferrous, non-ferrous materials have also got what we call a, break, a grain boundary. Now, let's say, for example, in the old days, you used to take a piece of wire and you used to bend it. And as you bend it, it heats up and you burn your body with a thing. Now, <laughs> that's what we used to do in school anyway. Now, if you keep on bending that piece of wire, eventually it breaks. Before it actually breaks, what actually happens is when you start bending it, you create a surface fracture. And as you create a fracture, a crack, it starts to, with every cycle, becomes a cyclic fatigue failure. With every cycle, that micro fracture, that, that, uh, that crack, will grow and grow and grow and grow and eventually break through that part. Now, how that happens is it follows the grain boundary. Now, exactly the same thing will happen with that shaft. You've got these big RZ and RAs, and as soon as, let's assume that's the other side of the shaft over there, what will happen is you'll get a fracture somewhere. As soon as that fracture starts and you get any movement, any cyclic fatigue exerted onto that shaft, that fracture will follow the grain boundary inside of that material and eventually it will crack right through and break that piece of material. So that's a, that's a metallurgical fact, and that's why on any shaft, the actual surface roughness, there's a specific document and a specification for the surface roughness of that shaft, especially where the bearings run, and obviously wherever there are special, on, on, on the thinner side of the shaft, obviously you've got your turbine head over here, and you've got the thicker part of the shaft, which comes down to the thinner part over there at the shoulder, and obviously you've got your thread on the end there. That's obviously much thinner than what the actual shaft is where your, where your journal bearings will basically run, the two journal bearing running faces. Now, as you come down, you'll normally find a radius in the corner there. That is there for a specific reason, but at the same time, there's a surface roughness specification that that shaft needs to be ground to. These fools have got no idea what they've done. They've gone and just taken a piece of sandpaper. The shaft doesn't fit the compressor wheel. The compressor wheel's hole slightly too small. Can't get the shaft in there. They know they can't drill the shaft, because, the, the compressor wheel, because they won't, won't be able to get that 100% in the center, and they won't be able to balance it again. So, well, let's just go and sandpaper the shaft down. Sorry, guys, that is totally unacceptable. It needs to be communicated, and I mean, this is really pathetic. So uh, before you guys go and buy these hybrids from these Chinese importers that piece these things together, just do your homework and understand what it is you're buying. Rather buy a brand name product, rather go to someone who actually has a reputable business that, that can actually build you components that are designed specifically, or build you rotating assemblies that are designed specifically for your application, for your shaft, without having to modify anything off-the-shelf or custom-made products, which a lot of these guys claim they are using, but they are modifying these things and they are going totally outside of spec. These turbochargers will fail. They will not give you a reliable operation. Have a look at the backplate. This is a normal backplate taken from a KO 3-29 or one of the old 1.8T 20-valve uh, turbos, and they've gone machine it. Look how rough this is. This is a really, really shoddy job. So obviously they've had to go and increase the diameter so that the wheel could fit in there. But at the same time, the height from the base of the wheel to the top of the actual blade over there, from that point there to that point there, is obviously different to the KO3, uh, KO3 wheel that used to fit in here. So they had to obviously machine the back of this blade or the back of the back plate down to accommodate the compressor wheel. And obviously that has been done and uh, hasn't been done extremely well. My biggest concern is the fact that there's no piston ring on the shaft. How does the shaft actually seal inside here? And that is the primary reason why the turbocharger is with us, because the client was complaining that the turbo was leaking oil. And you can actually see how much it's actually carboned up here. So the oil has actually got out between the split seal ring and the ring groove over here on the inside of the bearing housing. And the oil has come out burnt and carboned up onto the heat shield. So that is essentially the assembly there. So, uh, I'm sorry guys, this, the, the, the Chinese components that have been pieced together over here to build this is uh, of the absolute lowest quality, make a plan, grounded shaft, uh, copied compressor, which obviously, I mean, anybody's free to go and copy what they want, but have a look at this. This, this thrust collar 
is supposed to be, it's supposed to go on here very, very tight. Look at the, the clearance here. That is not correct. That is by no means correct. That should not move like that. This thrust collar is what mates up against your thrust bearing, your thrust faces. Those faces there mate up against that collar's face over there. It installs, if you'll see here, it's got a chamfer on it. That chamfer face is down. That face that you see there mates on those thrust pads over there. And then you have what you call an oil deflector, which is this guy here. Now, he obviously has little feet over there, which are supposed to locate into cutouts. So this thrust bearing, once installed with its oil locator, is free to move around like that. Together with the clearance on this collar, which is free to move around on the shaft like this, that is borrow time. This turbocharger will fail without a doubt, guaranteed, it's a matter of time. This here is a turbocharger pieced together by one of the local Chinese importers and I don't know what they sell this thing for, but they claim that this is a um, hybrid upgrade for the, the uh, Fiesta STs. And I can tell you now that this is what we term a polished turd. Nothing inside of this build is of any quality whatsoever. Beware guys, beware.